Luxury in design is often confused with spaciousness. I contend that the best and most luxurious spaces aren't those that are the biggest or the most well adorned, but are instead the spaces designed down to the last detail with love and care. Hey guys, Morphologist here, and welcome back to another episode of An Architect Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a ship that just came out, the new Origin 400i for Star Citizen, a luxury exploration vessel that just may well have the best designed interior yet from the talented designers over at Cloud Imperium Games. As always, I'll utilize my professional skills in the field of architecture to take a look at something in the digital realm, offering my view of its successes and failures. Keep in mind though that design is subjective and everybody's entitled to their own valid opinion. So I hope you'll join me as we step into this spacefaring yacht. And if you like this video and you think I deserve it by the end, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to show your support. At 60 meters long, with a width of 32 meters and a height of 12.5 meters, the 400i is deceptively big, and with a crew of three is meant to target the same segment as the RSI constellation, a segment that at present doesn't actually have a lot of competitors, so it's a welcome addition to the pool of ships available in the game. But its design is a bit divisive. Feels related to ships like the 890 Jump, and yet at the same time, with its very distinctive bow, it can also feel like a bit of a departure. It's taken a little bit of time to grow on me, but wait, are those nostrils? <sighs> no, I can't unsee it. Anyway, it started to grow on me, and it reminds me of like a trimaran, you know, a sailing ship. And its engines complement its very sleek, streamlined design that make it feel like it can cruise through space at a very high speed. And actually, I feel like it's a bit reminiscent of the Nubian cruiser from Star Wars Episode One, the one that Queen Amidala was flying in. And that's not a bad thing. It's one of the most beautiful ships, in my opinion, in all of Star Wars. Despite its distinctive bow, we also see some shape language that is present on other ships like the 890 Jump, especially at its stern with its large engine cluster. One thing that I don't think is quite so successful, though, is the canopy design. I don't mind its position and the idea of it, more so its angle relative to the hull. It feels maybe a bit too tall. I kind of wish it was more swept back, a little bit more curvy like the rest of the ship. It kind of feels like it was plopped onto the design as opposed to part of it. One thing that surprised me though is that the base paint for the 400i actually looks the best. I tried a couple of different other paints but they all seem to hide features that I like about this ship. So when you fly it, maybe you want to try the base skin. One last thing I want to cover before we go to the interior is the performance. Now, this ship isn't super good at combat. It has two size four hard points for the pilot to use, and it's got two size three turrets on the rear for your co-pilots to use. Those size three turrets are pretty powerful, but they're not made to shoot forward. It's really only for defense. And in that, it's actually pretty effective, especially when you consider that the 400i has a size 3 shield, which is unusual for a ship of its size. If you're looking to buy this ship to do some solo combat in, I would highly advise against it. It is terrible at turning and facing an opponent. If you don't have somebody on those turrets, you're likely to get yourself killed even against NPCs. But now let's take a closer look at its functional features. It has three different ways of getting inside, one of which really doesn't get you anywhere, but allows you to store your own XL1 hover bike from Origin, which isn't in the game yet, but you can get the Nox, which is in the game and purchasable at ship outlets, so there's that. Now in the rear, you've got a 42 SCU drop down cargo lift that can also fit some vehicles. Unfortunately though, don't plan to be able to fit anything like a regular rock or this MT that you see me putting on the lift because this version of the 400i has been changed in the live version to be lower. This has to do with fixing the landing gear compression rate. So unfortunately, we're just gonna have to deal with this for now. But the entrance really is the showpiece of the ship and why I feel like it reminds me of the Nubian cruiser from Star Wars. You see, it's not just a ramp or a lift, it's a stairway that comes down. 
And this reminds me of classical architectural design where important spaces are elevated above those around it to suggest importance and a higher status. And of course, a ship is naturally going to be higher than you, but to have stairs makes a statement of ceremony so that your procession through it feels like something important is happening. There's an event. You're ascending somewhere better than where you are. Let's put it this way. You've probably heard of a grand staircase before, but you probably haven't heard of a grand elevator before because they don't exist. But now let's take a look at the interior of the 400i. Arriving at the landing at the top, we find ourselves in a foyer. And this demonstrates a very clear idea of procession, which we've talked about in the past. To review, procession is essentially a tool by which the designer imagines how a user will transition through spaces, and through that knowledge is able to assemble a logical procession of program for the user. There's more to it than that, but in the case of the 400i, I really love this space because of how logical it is. When ingressing or egressing, what are you going to do first? You're probably going to take your suit off, or you're going to put your suit on, or you're going to grab a weapon on your way out to do a bunker mission. And so having that here makes a lot of sense. It also makes a lot of sense to also put your alternative ingress point here, which is an airlock, which you would use to connect to other ships or to a space station. What I particularly like about these suit lockers and weapon lockers is that they actually move. There's a mechanism to them to serve the items to you so they're more easily accessed. This is completely unnecessary, but it's definitely something I can imagine a luxury vessel might have in the distant future. It's a subtle touch, but a nice one. But one thing I want to draw your attention to is the floating ball eye thing. This is actually a gravity generator, and only Origin has really been known to display them like this. And I have a theory about why that is. You see, this is an exploration ship. It's not purely luxury, and part of exploration is having some really nice tools to get the job done. So displaying something like this is a bit of a statement. It's saying, I have money to do this exploration better. Which is why I suspect the designers felt it was okay to have you walk through the engineering section. Unlike other luxury vessels, the designers understand that the user in this case is not being chauffeured, but driving the vessel themselves. And part of the experience is being able to see the fancy equipment that you've purchased, showing it off to your friends, saying, look, I bought the most expensive coolers, the most expensive engines, the most expensive shields. And that's why I think that they put glass on these spaces. It's not about hiding it, it's about embellishing it. It's really about intention here. With the 890 Jump, the intention is to be chauffeured and to be pampered in a luxurious environment. Here, they know that the owner of this vessel wants to explore, and so everything about exploration should be celebrated and centered to the design of the ship. One cool little quirk of the engineering space, though, is that it's actually cooled to a lower temperature than the rest of the ship. If you look at the lower left-hand corner, the temperature drops from 24 degrees Celsius down to 3 degrees Celsius. I think this is the first time I've actually seen this on a ship in Star Citizen, so worth noting. Moving aft, we arrive at the cargo bay, which again can also hold a vehicle as I'd shown you earlier. In first person, I couldn't blame you for feeling that this space is kind of small, but when you start to look in third person and start to understand the scale of it relative to the human size, you realize it's actually very spacious and has plenty of room for loading cargo in. Also, they have the escape pods in this space, which is a little bit strange, but it's ultimately not a very big ship, so it probably doesn't matter that it's so far from the living quarters. One thing that I did notice, though, that is a bit of a design oversight in this space is that there is only a button on the cargo lift in order to bring it down in this space, which means that if you've lowered it for somebody to drive away and they don't bring the lift back up again, you'll have to go up to the bridge to bring it up. I think this is a bit of a design oversight, and I hope they come back and add a button panel on the outside of these ring things so that we can bring it up again without having to go up to the bridge. But now let's move on to the other parts of the ship, as you're probably itching to see the luxurious side of the 400i. But before we get there, we need to transition to that space via lift or via ladder. Yes, this little ship actually has a little Jeffrey's tube, a manual way to go up and down, something that I've complained is weirdly absent from other ships that are bigger like the 600i. And this is a good thing to have because if the power goes out, then you have a way to go up and down the decks. The elevator isn't anything fancy, and it serves its purpose. A bit utilitarian, but I think that's keeping in theme with this luxurious exploration vessel. 
Transitioning to deck two, we find ourselves in a different material set. Instead of steel plating on the floor, we have luxurious wood inlaid flooring with a nice little subtle lighting pattern that goes along the edges. It's a nice and subtle touch, and this actually changes color when going in low power mode to something like green. To the left, you'll find the lounge and some rooms. To the right, you'll find the bridge. And straight ahead, you'll find behind this blank door what might be referred to as a dayhead. However, there's only one toilet on this vessel, strangely. And so this is just the head. What I love here is the efficiency of the design. You have a place to put your clothing that's dry and sealed away, a rainfall shower head above you, a drain on the floor, which doubles as just the area you walk, and of course, a fold away toilet with a cute little toilet paper dispenser that folds out. It's completely ridiculous, but I love it. It's so eccentric, but at the same time, it's so urgent. It's needlessly complex, but that's kind of what makes it luxurious. It's efficient with space, and when you don't need something, you can fold it away. It really reminds me of luxurious spaces you might find in Tokyo. You don't have a lot of space, but you still have a lot of money, so people tend to spend a lot on making it super efficiently designed. And that, to me, is what real luxury is like, being able to fully utilize an interior space. But now let's move down the hallway to check out the crew quarters. The first thing that came to mind was utilitarian luxury. I know it's a strange idea, but again, it's what I just talked about with the bathroom. It's very small, so it's very efficiently designed and created with luxurious materials and very fine detailing. Everything is where you need it to be and only as big as you need it to be with maybe a little bit of extra flourish here and there with some nicer lighting and some fancier ways of creating a cabinet that moves mechanically. The ability for CIG's designers to use the space so efficiently and so logically shows a handle on the trade that is masterful. I also want to point out that finally we're getting portholes in an interior space. I don't know why it's taken so long to get this on a ship, but thank you CIG, finally we can see where we are when we're inside our room. One other cool little quirk of this room is that it actually has a little storage drawer beneath the bed. Again, efficiency. Awesome CIG, keep this up. Now let's move on to the captain's quarters, which is a bit more luxurious than the standard crew quarters. I'm sure they're gonna be just a little bit jealous, but ultimately the captain owns the vessel after all, right? This space is designed in a very similar style to the crew quarters, but it has its own little working area, which makes sense for a captain who may be plotting the course forward as the crew gets some shut eye or takes the helm for a while while the captain does his business. It's graciously sized with plenty of storage, enough room to display some things, and an integrated wall panel. It also has its own porthole, which again is something I'd love to see more of in ships and maybe even added into existing ones like the 600i. And I also like how the seat here is actually integrated into a channel so that it doesn't slide around while the ship is doing maneuvers. This actually seems like a space I personally would love to live in, to stay in. If I lived in the Star Citizen universe, I'd want a cabin pretty much like this, but maybe, maybe with a queen size bed. Not just for the size, but sometimes for the company? Yeah, we'll leave it there. Moving aft, we find ourselves in one of the most stunning spaces on the whole of the 400i. This lounge is everything I'd want out of an exploration vessel. It has utility with a scanning table, but it also has a kitchenette and a place to eat. When you're out exploring in your luxury exploration vessel, you don't want to be focusing inward, you want to see what's outside in the exotic environments that you're visiting, like Pyro eventually. It's luxuriously appointed, but only as big as it needs to be for an efficiently sized exploration vessel. The kitchenette is also in the same style as other Origin ships with a very high-end marble with golden inlay for the veining. I love this little touch. And of course, what exploration vessel would be complete without its own personal storage of Jean-Luc Picard's champagne? It truly is a wonderful space to plan out your journey with a couple of other friends. I really, really like this space and it probably is my favorite of the 400i and maybe one of my most favorite spaces in all of Star Citizen's ship designs. But now, my intrepid friends, it's time for us to head forward and finally see what it's like to be at the helm of this majestic little exploration ship. Ascending a subtle riser onto the bridge, we find ourselves faced with a central captain's seat. 
Importantly though, you'll notice that it has two sticks to control the vessel instead of a standard yoke, which is important for an exploration vessel that needs to be maneuverable through tight and hard to navigate spaces like unstable jump points. The captain's seat is also treated to an absolutely stunning view out the front of the ship, which is appropriate again for an exploration vessel meant to explore and experience a new place. Flicking at our two co-pilot consoles, which remind me of the console that Data used in Star Trek The Next Generation. Kind of a cool suggestion if that's what it was intended to be. I particularly love the sweeping design lines which we find present on all Origin ships. Every room uses these continuous lines that just go around the entire place tying all the little details together, and I love the way that it feels to be in a space that has this level of attention to detail. It's also very complex to model something like this, so I have to commend the modelers over there at CIG for their work here. Really well done. Overall then, the bridge was a very important part of the design to get right, and CIG nails it in this case. I think everything ties together well, and it's comfortable to use. It really showcases CIG's improvement over the years for designing starships. Imagine for a moment just how much space would be in the 600i if it was as efficiently designed as this. The 400i then joins a proud family of ship designs, and I think that it has a little bit of everything. A little bit of the 890 jump in it, and a little bit of maybe even the 100i's DNA. And so that makes it a pretty good entry to this excellent lineup of ships. The biggest downside to the 400 is just how bad it makes everything else look for the interior design. Clearly, they may need to go back and make some of these interior spaces a bit more efficient. Well, what do you guys think? Do you like the 400i or do you hate it? Let me know down in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.